My name is Del Chai. Many of you have not heard of me, so I put together a quick little briefing. I've been called the InfoSec Rasputin. Anyone who knows Rasputin knows why that's uh, fitting. I also was voted the Gordon Ramsay of IT three years in a row. I've spoken here at DEF CON before, Hope, PumpCon, Sky Talks, and other professional engagements. I'm also the Minister of Propaganda and Revenge for Attack Research. Those of you who've seen Delbert before probably recognize this. Anyone who recognizes the reference to Gweeds, rock on. So, Hacker Chick digs me. If you've read Hacker Chick's column, she's appreciating that uh, having spent time with me back at the Alexis Park back in the old days. And that's enough about me. Any of you who know how to set a shell variable, close your eyes, set the shell variable for deity. And we are going to recite the InfoSec Serenity Prayer together. So once you set that shell variable, repeat after me. Deity. Grant me the serenity to accept people who will not secure their networks. <laughs> the courage to face them when they blame me for their problems. And the wisdom to go out drinking afterwards. I first recited this on Exotic Liability about a year ago, and then people have lived by it since. I think it's a good thing to start out any talk with. You're doing it wrong. What does that mean? It's a phrase meaning that the method you're using is not creating the de desired result. That doesn't necessarily mean you're in error, but the effort you're doing and the manner in which you're going about doing things is not providing the result that you want. This is the number one problem I find in physical security. So I'm not trying to insult anyone, and I'm not trying to say, yeah, you don't know what you're doing, blah, 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 blah. What I'm saying is there are things that you don't know about yet that are gonna come up and bite you in the ass, and that's what I'm here to tell you about. First off, let's start with what your goal is. Your mission is to design and implement a physical security system for a new facility with multi-factor authentication and video surveillance. Do you accept this mission? Oh, I said yes, I wanted to get out of New Jersey. So, physical security, lasers, iris scanners, fingerprint readers, high security locks, all that great stuff that comes to your mind. Right? That's what you think of, right? You think of physical security, you see all these great toys, and you're like, oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, is that you can't just jump into it like that. And to prove this, I call upon Dick Marshenko, the rogue warrior. Proper previous planning prevents piss poor performance. You cannot just jump into a physical security engagement and go, oh, two of those, three of those, four of those, put them in the wall, we're done. It doesn't work that way. There is a definition for physical security. And how many people know the old saw about that, right? You ask three people what physical security is, you get four answers. So let's start out with defining physical security. Wikipedia. Well, I had to do something you would know. Physical security describes both measures that prevent or deter attackers from accessing a facility resource or information stored on physical media. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Come on. Good? Yes? No? So let's see what the feds have to say. The NRC says measures to reasonably ensure that source or special nuclear material will only be used for authorized purposes and not end up in Gomez's basement. <laughs> and then the state of Texas says, measures that are used to provide physical protection of resources against deliberate and accidental threats. Now these all sound like pretty good reasonable definitions, don't they? Well, the number one definition of physical security is to ensure that Chris Nickerson stays out of your building. For all four of you that have ever seen Tiger Team, you understand what I mean. So, let's look at our methodology. There's five steps. 
Assessment, assignment, arrangement, approval, and action. These are critical. You go through these in this order, you will prevent problems from happening. So let's go over these one by one. Assessment, a thorough examination of the facility to be protected. What this means is you make a walk around. You buy a new pair of shoes and you look at the area that you're going to protect. My first walk around on this assignment, I walked into the loading bay, walked into a staples truck, took a case of photocopier paper, put it on my shoulder, walked into the building and walked into my office, unimpeded. After that, I went out and got lunch. I came back to the front door, walked through the turnstile, set off the alarm. The security guard didn't even look up from Facebook and I walked into my office. What you need to do is you need to make a physical assessment of the area you are going to be protecting. So let's dig a little deeper into that. Scope of the property. Am I just the third floor? Am I the entire building? Am I the parking lot? Am I the roof? Am I the parking garage? Know what you're going to be protecting. Look for all established points of entry and egress. Regular doors, fire doors, garage doors, a door that looks like it goes nowhere, but it actually does. <clears throat> Potential points of entry and egress. Skylights, if your name is Lizzie Borden. A garage door that is next door, but has a side door that leads into your building. Windows, glass doors. I hate glass doors. Can anyone see the logic behind having a glass door in a secure area? <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, I'll buy that. It's usually all yuppie, you know. Wow, look at my amazing glass door. And I'm like, yeah, look at my amazing glass door breaker that I got from the EMT. You're not compromised. Look for existing security measures. Sometimes in a building, there will have been a previous security system. It may still be there. It may be in use. It may not. Maybe you can use it. Maybe it needs to be torn out. Are we using locks? Do we have to replace those locks? Who has the keys to those locks? Who has the master key to that lock? Is there a retired guy sitting at home with a key ring with the front door to your office, sitting next to his Budweiser? Evaluation of the physical property. Doesn't mean just the property itself. One engagement I had, I took a walk for about a mile in each direction. A quarter mile away from the office was an ice skating rink open to the public. The parents would dump their kids at the ice skating rink and leave them there on a Friday and Saturday night. I don't need to tell you the kids weren't ice skating. They were smoking and talking and sneaking their first beers and then they decided they needed some money and they would walk across the parking lot into my facility, smash car windows and steal GPS's and then sell them at pawn shops. So an evaluation of the physical property and the surrounding area. And then risk assessment. How much risk is there? Am I next door to a correctional facility? Am I next door to a bar? Is there a crack house across the street? Evaluate your risk and then you can build your mitigation. Next, assignment. Establish the required level of security for specific areas and assets within the facility. Not everything needs a three-factor biometric laser-generated lock. You will not spend $10,000 on a security system to secure the coffee room, unless you like good coffee. So you assess high level, your data center, your executive offices, your finance and accounting offices. These are very important high targets. I was invited by a CEO to do a security walkthrough on a building once and he damn near made bang bang in his pampers when I showed him his tax records for the last five years. Because the file cabinet was unlocked, the CFO's office was unlocked, the window to the CFO's office was unlocked and they were on the first floor. Prioritize in that manner. Medium level, all your entry and egress, your front door, your back door, your fire exits. Figure out what you need to do to protect them or if they're already protected. Also, your reception area and your elevator area, should you have one. 
This is where people will come in and out of your office. This does not require a high level of security. Again, no $20,000 locks, but camera surveillance, yes. Due diligence, who came in, who went out, monitor those areas, be a little more cautious than you would. Low level areas, your common areas and your cubicle farms. They are not a high security problem, but you still have to watch them. If you do your layout correctly, which I'll get to in a second, if someone takes a desktop, out of one of your cubicle farms and walks to the front door with it, you should see them on six, seven different cameras as they go from one place to the other. And let me tell you, law enforcement loves that. Because if you only have the one camera, you see a guy carrying a computer. You don't see him going out the door. You don't see him going into the parking lot. You don't see him going into the basement. You have no proof. It could be anybody carrying a computer from point A to point B. So consider also insurance requirements. Some insurance companies require that you have a best effort or a minimum effort to securing your facility. Make sure you meet those requirements, know what they are. Compliance requirements, PCI. Who here has to deal with PCI? Don't you hate it? Well, you may have some compliance issues with securing your data center keeping your computers, your physical backups, your tape backups, CD backups, storage, these things may have to be secured at a different level. Fire code requirements. You can lock a fire door from one side only, not from both. Make sure that you're in compliance with your fire codes. Make sure that you can't just jimmy it open. Last night at my party, some folks thought they'd be brilliant. Jimmy opened a fire exit and tried to come up the back door without invites. They were caught. This is a good thing. And business requirements. Make sure at the end of the day, when you assign things correctly, that it fits with your business plan. You do not want your IT director locked out. You do not want your business to falter because an IT guy can't get into the data center at two in the morning because the lock system has locked him out and your server is down and now you're losing business. And right now, losing business is tantamount to death. Arrangement. And I touched on that a second ago. Establish the most effective locations for your security devices based on your requirements. Placing your cameras with wide-angle lenses or focus lenses in particular zones, making sure that the zones overlap. I could, when I got done with my system, I could watch someone from the front door to their desk, out the back door on eight different cameras. As you walk through, you can track people. Again, this is important because you have to be able to prove bad things are going wrong. Also, if you're a James Bond fan, someone will kind of sneak up, go snip, 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 and try and cut the cable on your camera. Now, if you've armored your cables, you don't have that problem, but if you didn't, Here I am cutting the cable on the camera, but there's a camera over there and a camera over there that's watching me do that. So that's the idea of arrangement. Make sure that there's redundancy. Some places like to have man trap doors. Who's ever had to deal with a man trap door before? Do you know what the captive audience is? Have you ever heard of the captive audience? That's when you walk through the first door of a man trap. And then you walk out the second door of the man trap and you shut it. And the poor bastard behind you is going to walk into Taco Bell. <laughs> Beep. Hey. <laughs> All right. That's called the captive audience. So cameras, field of view, redundancy and tracking. Doorways, ergonomics and traffic control. You want to minimize tailgating. Or you want to encourage it if you want to do what I was just talking about. You make sure that you don't have 35 people lined at the door to swipe their card and getting late to their desks every day. So ergonomics is important as well as security. You have to make sure you don't back things up. Make sure that there's a clear way in and a clear way out. Multi-factor authentication. Again, you don't need it everywhere, but you need it some places. Time-based restrictions. Some people like to say, General employee 